Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will recap for you a drama, crime, thriller film from 2019 titled 21 Bridges. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Andre is a successful NYPD homicide detective, the only career he has ever considered. When Andre was just 13 years old, he was left alone with his widowed mother, after his father was killed in the line of duty. Andre's father was ambushed by three perpetrators, managed to kill two of them, but sadly fell victim to the third. Now 19 years later, Andre has developed a reputation for tracking down cop killers, having killed eight of them over a nine-year career. As a result, Andre has been called in front of Internal Affairs, who are conducting their mandatory investigation into his most recent incident. Speaking candidly, Andre neither shows remorse, nor does he embrace the reputation, but he points out that he has been cleared on every previous shooting. When he's not at work, Andre spends his time taking care of his mother Vanetta, who suffers from dementia and sometimes mistakes Andre for her late husband. One night in Manhattan, two low-level criminals, Michael and Ray, plan to steal 30 kilograms of cocaine being housed at a wine shop. Upon their arrival, they are shocked to discover 300 keys of uncut cocaine, 10 times more than they were expecting. Ray is elated, considering the find a jackpot, but Michael takes a more thoughtful approach and expresses his apprehension, as they are not even equipped to carry that much weight with just two people. Undeterred, Ray begins filling his bag with the packaged drugs, but gets interrupted by the sound of the police knocking at the wine shop door. Seeing the robbery in progress, the responding officers breach the shop and a heavy gunfight ensues. However, the police officers are overpowered by Michael and Ray's automatic weapons, resulting in the deaths of seven NYPD officers. Andre is assigned to the case and gets briefed on scene by Captain McKenna of the 85th Precinct. Several other officers from the 85th are also on scene mourning their fallen colleagues, and McKenna implores Andre to live up to his reputation in bringing the killers to justice, whatever it takes. Due to the volume of drugs involved, Andre is also directed to work alongside narcotics detective Frankie. An assignment he disagrees with but McKenna says it's not optional. Elsewhere, the robbers find a secluded area to gather themselves where Michael chastises Ray for killing seven police officers, even executing the wounded when they had already been subdued. Because of Ray's actions, they will now be fugitives for the remainder of their lives. As such, they meet with their contact, Bush, and demand a larger cut of the deal, which would set them up to get out of town. Back at the crime scene, Andre surmises that the robbers were not prepared for 300 kilos, only 50 of the 300 packs were taken, and they arrived with just two people, driving a small BMW car. The FBI also arrives on scene and assumes jurisdiction, which is strongly opposed by both Andre and McKenna. Based on the variables involved in moving that kind of weight, Andre believes that the drugs will be sold somewhere on the island of Manhattan before sunrise, so he asks that the city be completely locked down, on the condition that the suspects are caught no later than 5 a.m. Wanting to keep Andre on the case, Police Chief Spencer backs the plan and agrees to take it to the mayor, so the FBI agrees to lock down all 21 Manhattan bridges until 5 a.m. on the dot. They also close any transportation routes in and out of the city, the rivers are patrolled, the four tunnels blocked, and all of the rail trains and subway stations are closed. Meanwhile, Bush takes Michael and Ray to the buyer, Hawk, who initially laughs at their demand for more money, but Michael has already run the numbers. The 50 kilos become 200 by the time they hit the streets. Average street value is 32 grand per unit, which amounts to almost six and a half million total, making $1 million a reasonable ask. Hawk agrees to the deal and refers them to another contact, Adi, a reputable cleaner who can launder the money via offshore accounts and supply them with new identities and the necessary travel documents. A still photo of Michael and Ray running a red light is discovered, and the vehicle registration tracked to Bush's ex-girlfriend Yolanda. Yolanda's apartment is served with a warrant, and although she hasn't seen Bush since they broke up, she identifies Ray and Michael from the traffic cam photos. Ray was a troubled youth who enlisted in the army, with his good friend and Michael's older brother, Arvel. Michael, on the other hand, grew up a smart kid with a bright future. When Arvel was killed serving in Afghanistan, Michael dropped out of college and joined the army, but he was dishonorably discharged after striking his commanding officer. Upon returning to civilian life, he reunited with Ray, who had promised Arvel he would watch over him, and they fell into a pattern of crime. Michael and Ray go to Adi's home, where they see themselves on the news and learn that the island has been locked down. At the same time, Bush shows up at the Pan Am lounge to see his new girlfriend, which was being staked out by police. Before Andre can get there, Sergeant Butcho of the 85th Precinct approaches Bush and takes vengeance for the slain officers by killing Bush at the main bar. 
Andre arrives soon after and learns that their only lead has been killed, and a weapon likely planted on him after the fact, as evidenced by Butcho's empty ankle holster. Andre confronts the sergeant about the shooting, escalating to the point where he shoves Andre in frustration, and gets punched in the face for doing so. Back at Adi's condo, $326,000 is transferred to offshore accounts using Ray and Michael's new fictitious names. The balance will be paid in cash upon their arrival in Miami, which they are instructed to travel by motorbus to. The conversation is interrupted by the sound of a police force, led by Lt. Kelly, knocking down Adi's reinforced steel door. Adi is mortally wounded in the ensuing gunfight, so before dying he gives Michael two flash drives from his computer, and the corresponding password. Curious as to how Adi's condo was located so quickly, Andre makes his way there from the lounge and arrives just in time to spot Michael and Ray, who narrowly escaped out Adi's window. In a nearby kitchen, Ray insists that he and Michael split up. He sustained a gunshot wound to the midsection, and staying together will make them too easy to track, so he tells Michael to keep moving and keep his head up, promising he will see him soon in Miami. Andre identifies himself to one of the kitchen workers, who nods to direct him towards Ray's location. Too injured to continue running, Ray anxiously sits in a doorway, where he mistakenly shoots a bystander before Andre takes him out. Elsewhere in the building, Michael hides amongst the frozen meat carcasses and disarms Frankie using the butt of his gun, then uses her as a shield as he holds her at gunpoint. Frankie insists that Andre take the shot, despite being in the line of fire, but this time Andre refuses and instead tries to talk Michael down. He references Michael's service record, mentioning that he tried to follow his brother Arvel's example, and recognizes that all of the killings thus far have been Ray's doing. The words resonate with Michael, and he points out a series of suspicious events. At the wine shop, the worker checked his watch just before the police showed up, and they knocked quietly on the door, which wouldn't occur when responding to a robbery call. Then later at the cleaner's condo, Adi was shot through the peephole, without warning, and he identified them as 85th precinct before even laying eyes on them. Michael retreats through the meat locker and releases Frankie, barricading the door behind him with a screwdriver. He escapes on foot and Frankie then chastises Andre for not taking the shot. Michael takes shelter at the nearby Parallax Hotel, where he holds a guest hostage in his room and knocks him out for his laptop. Meanwhile, the FBI arrives at Adi's condo to remind McKenna the island will soon be reopened, but McKenna isn't worried. He praises Andre for taking out Ray, and remains confident that Andre will find the other suspect within the hour. Michael uses the password Adi gave him to access the flash drive, and realizes that the 85th precinct has been involved in trafficking drugs, as the files denote each corrupt officer by their badge number. Michael changes his appearance with a fresh shave and a stolen suit, but has to detour at the hotel lobby due to the arriving police officers. He reroutes through the kitchen but gets identified there, resulting in another chase. While taking evasive measures, Michael inadvertently darts in front of a vehicle and gets thrown to the ground. He gets up in haste, leaving his bag of money behind, and is saved from a gunshot when Andre intervenes. As 5 AM approaches, the subway stations begin reopening and Michael heads underground where he is cornered on one of the trains. A standoff ensues, but Michael is convinced to give himself up after Andre promises to keep him alive, which Michael finds credible since Andre is the only cop who talks first and shoots second. Just as he lowers his weapon and surrenders it, Michael is shot from behind by Frankie, who claims she thought Andre was in danger. She radios into dispatch and reports the shooting, while Michael uses his final breaths to whisper the password to Andre and hand over the flash drives. Afterwards, Frankie and Andre return to their colleagues who universally praise them for their efforts. Andre, however, now more suspicious than ever, borrows Frankie's phone and discovers she had called Lt. Kelly just before Adi's condo was raided. Later that morning, Manhattan reopens as normal and Captain McKenna returns home to find Andre waiting for him, gun in hand. Barely surprised, McKenna already knows why he's there. Having accessed the drives, Andre knows that the 85th precinct has been acting as armed security for a high-level drug dealer. What happened the previous night was simply a case of bad luck when the wine shop got robbed. Adi was easy to find because he is the same cleaner that McKenna uses to wash his illegally obtained cash. Unapologetic, McKenna replies that it was never about Cadillacs or Rolexes, it was about meager wages for a job that costs officers their lives, others suffer from depression, failed marriages, and have zero quality of life. Having grown up in a police family, and experienced firsthand the loss of his father, the words hit home with Andre, yet he refuses to simply walk away. Just then, Several officers from the 85th are spotted moving outside the house just before they open fire. Andre manages to systematically take out all of them, including McKenna who refuses to give himself up, even after sustaining heavy injuries. 
Frankie arrives from behind and holds Andre at gunpoint, demanding the flash drives, but Andre tells her that it's already over. He says the drives have been copied, therefore killing him would accomplish nothing more than a life sentence for Frankie, and her daughter shouldn't have to grow up without a mother. Hearing this, Frankie tearfully lowers her gun and surrenders her badge, allowing herself to be taken into custody. Afterwards, Andre is shown driving across the Manhattan Bridge, the bloodstained flash drive still in his car. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel to see more.